Yes, welcome once again uh, for our last presentation uh, for the day. Uh, yes. Yeah. So we are going to look at the ethical issues in reproductive health and cooperation. Uh, just like what we discussed earlier on, there are also issues here. Uh, in reproductive health. And these issues usually val uh, violate values, rights, and responsibilities of reproductive health professionals. So we are going to look at some of these issues and uh, describe how the issues arise and the what uh, ethical principles are at play and how to navigate around well. So the first, of course, is autonomy and the right to make uh, decisions. In the context of productive health, you want people to have the rights to make their own decision regarding whether they can use family planning, okay, and other uh, fertility treatment methods. But of course, this comes with resistance from certain cultures and religion. For example, we have uh, we yeah. have certain religions which do not allow the use of contraception. Okay, and also some cultures that do not allow the use of contraception. Um, so the, making a decision here becomes quite hard because of cultural and religious norms. But also uh, in our context, for example, uh, a woman decided to take family planning a family planning method, usually uh, it is expected that they have to ask for permission from the husband. So you see that this is an adult, but still the adult cannot make their own independent decisions, their own autonomous choices. So that's an issue you have there. Um, as, a, as a productive health practitioner, you want people to be able to make their own choices, but uh, because of these uh, norms may not be uh, possible. So that is one challenge that you have. Okay, so we move to the next. Uh, my mouse is, my pointer is always disappointing. Oh. Always disappointing. So, not just one minute. Let me exit. Uh, ex exit. Still refusing. Okay, just one minute also. Okay, so we are good to go. So that's point number one. I, I guess you have understood it clearly. Point number two is related to access to reproductive health care. Uh, your interest as a reproductive health officer is that everyone who requires reproductive health services should have access to them. But of course, there are often barriers that are associated with geographical location, cost, stigma, and sometimes legal restrictions. So the, there is an ideal situation that you want, but uh, there are limitations. You, you can't achieve that. Uh, it, it is very hard to achieve what you want, which is basically equitable access to reproductive health care. 
So this is basically a matter of social justice, which we have been explaining throughout these sessions, that you want everyone to have equal access to reproductive health resources or services, um, regardless of their social economic status, tribe, race, or even ethnic, uh, or even ethnic background. So your interest is to make sure that you institute programs that try to eliminate these barriers. So that's point number two. Point number three is related to technologies. And with technologies, um, we'll look at many of them later and how and what ethical issues do they actually raise. We have ethical issues related to surrogate mothers, uh, 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 fertilize, intra vitro uh, fertilization, and things like that. We'll have to look at each of these later on in the subspace slides. So let's come to uh, <clears throat> population control and family planning programs. These programs are usually aimed at uh, reducing birth rates. You, you, uh, you want to avoid population explosion. So sometimes uh, countries have to institute policies that are actually, uh, that can criminalize people who are giving birth. Uh, for example, in China, in China, there is a one-child policy. They, okay, they, now want, they now want to increase it to, a, to, three, to three children per person. If you're married, you should, the maximum you should have is three. But they used to have one, one child policy. So that kind of policy is a violation of people's reproductive rights. Uh, so it is an ethical issue. Uh, in, a, in India, um, pregnant women are forced to abort. Uh, if they they have uh, a female uh, unborn child, that is being forced, that is coercion. So you don't want to have those things. You want people to have to make voluntary choices on the number of children that they need to have, and everyone should have access to family planning services such that they can uh, be in control of the of when and how many children they need to have. Education and empowerment are also very, very key. Now we move to the gender equity, which is that, you see, men and, and females don't have the same powers. They don't have the same opportunities. They don't have the same resources. Often, women have less opportunities, they have limited access to resources, and these things impact on their productive health outcomes. So when dealing with the uh, issues of uh, ethics in relation to uh, gender equity, you need to make sure that we have a balanced, um, a balanced card, okay? the women are getting the same job opportunities like men. They have the same kind of payment like men. Okay, that is what you call gender equity. Uh, so you want to have that situation. When you have that situation, it means that you're addressing a lot of issues. One of the issues that you're going to address is that you're making, you're empowering women and therefore they can engage in a number of uh, activities, whether political or civil, that can promote their well-being, okay? So issues of gender discrimination should actually be avoided. 
Uh, another issue that needs to be addressed is the issue of gender-based violence. And this also ha it has uh, ethical implications. Abortion. Abortion is a debate and it will always continue to be a debate. Uh, there are people against it. There are people uh, who are uh, proponents for abortion. Okay. The issues that people usually raise is that people who use family planning methods actually, for example, emergency family planning, I, I use these. These are basically people who are actually committing abortion. It's one of the arguments that is being confronted. So it is morally wrong to abort, because actually abortion, you're, you're actually becoming a mother. That's what, uh, uh, th those are some of the arguments that are being fronted. Then there are those who actually disagree, say that, you see, um, when you have emergency contraception, you are preventing abortion. I mean, you're preventing uh, implantation, but you're not committing abortion because abortion happens after implantation. So th those are arguments that happen. But of course, they raise the issues of, they raise ethical issues in relation to, are you preserving life or you're, you're taking away life? Those are ethical questions that uh, happen. Now we have an issue of technology that we earlier on talked about. And technology enables a number of things. One is preserving embryos for future use. Okay. Uh, you get your eggs and then put them somewhere else until that time is when you feel like you're ready. Then you, you, you they're either implanted we are fertilized from outside and then implanted into you, and then you can you carry the pregnancy. Uh, or you get another person to carry these eggs for you, and then they are fertilized, or they are fertilized outside and they are implanted into another person, things like that. That is what you call uh preservation of human embryos and postcards. What are the ethical issues here? If I preserve my eggs and then someone else carries the pregnancy, who is the owner of this newborn? Or if the one who donated the eggs actually dies, that then uh, the embryo is still existing, what happens? So these are questions which are very hard. Uh, to answer, how long should this embryo actually be stored before it can be made to become a fetus and then a newborn? These are quite difficult questions. Adoption and donation of embryos related to what I've just explained. Okay. If I receive an embryo, I carry it in my uterus for nine months. But I've been paid to carry that pregnancy. When time comes, I decide to change that. You see, since I carried this pregnancy, this child is mine. I'm not releasing this child to you. So you're not going to become adopted. Adopt, you're, to you're not going to become parents who have adopted this child because I'm, I'm actually the biological mother. So quite difficult questions to answer. These are issues related to what we call surrog uh, surrogacy. A surrogate mother is one who carries the pregnancy from eggs of another woman. That one becomes a surrogate mother. So where do you get the line between uh, me paying you to carry the pregnancy and then you actually being the mother. At what point should we separate this child from you? These are ethical questions. 
that have to be answered. And then contraception. Should contraception be a natural process or let it be artificial in the lab? Is it actually okay that contraception or fertilization is, tech, is, 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 is done using technology or it should actually be a natural process? Is it morally right or not? Implantation, if, if someone is actually diseased, deceased or is actually still living, and they don't have a functioning uterus because of a problem. Okay. Uh, would it be okay if we get another person who has a uterus and then we implant that uterus into that person who doesn't have it? Uh, but what impact will it have on the psychological well being of this one? Who, has, who is the recipient of the uterus? What are the possible issues that can arise because of this transplantation? Because one, you can have surgical problems or complications, rejection, infection, bleeding, and even miscarriage. So can you get involved in that? And then we have what we call genetic editing or genetic engineering. A fetus can be, uh, their genetic makeup can actually be examined to determine if they have genetic disorders. And if they do so, then maybe the pregnancy does not need to be carried to term. But who makes that decision? Who, who makes the decision of whether this pregnancy has to be terminated because of the disorders that have been discovered? Yet these disorders actually, actually cause harm. And even these technologies that are being used may themselves actually also cause stress, social stigma, and discrimination. So there are also a lot of issues there. Okay. So what basically are we saying here? Uh, what we are saying is that in the practice of reproductive health, you'll encounter a lot of ethical issues. But the process of navigating through these ethical issues, the processes are actually different. And uh, you need to refer to the presentation we had on uh, ethical decision making. Ethical decision making. Uh, in that presentation, which is also actually on YouTube, all the presentations on uh, on ethics, all of them are now on YouTube. You can go and check them out. Um, so what I, what I was trying to say is that in that presentation, we looked at theories of ethics, the ontological theory, utilitarian theory. Uh, we looked at models, uh, okay? We looked at frameworks. So look, check those things, check that presentation and see how you can navigate all these scenarios that we have created. Otherwise, we have come to the end of the presentation. Uh, if you have questions, you are welcome.